Thanks so much for tuning in. Merry Christmas to everyone. We're going to talk about poinsettia plants and just a little bit about uh, the culture and how they grow and what to do to keep them happy and healthy. And uh, today uh, I've got this small plant. It's, this is what's called a four inch. And I'm going to show you all the details on this little guy here. Uh, poinsettias are relatively easy to take care of. Um, they are uh, a plant that's uh, part of the Euphorbia family, so Euphorbia pulcherima, which is the poinsettia. And these plants have that milky sap, so when you do uh, break the stems, you'll see the milky sap come up. That's typical of Euphorbias. Um, they're not, uh, we have many hardy varieties of, of poinsettias that grow in cold climates. We grow them as garden plants. We have many subtropical and tropical varieties, which we grow as like um, house plants and indoor plants. So beautiful selection, beautiful uh, genera of plant material. I love the euphorbias. Um, this particular one is one that uh, is very popular, as you know, especially at Christmas time. So uh, what I like about poinsettia is just the real bright, vivid color. And it's just a note that these bright red, uh, bracts are called they're not that flowers the flowers are actually the center these are the flowers inside in the middle of the of the bloom but these these are actually the uh these are modified leaves so they're called bracts b-r-a-c-t-s and so uh the bracts are looking really good and they slowly color up so even uh, i you know they, they all start out looking green just like this leaf and then the pigment starts to turn a little bit red and a little bit redder and it takes a period of time for them to change over uh, but uh, then they turn out just like this flowers in the middle um, the key to getting the poinsettias to, to change color is really by lengthening the night time and so that's shortening the days but the key is is the night has to be uninterrupted you can't have um, you can't have the plant uh, being interrupted any time during the night cycle. So when you do put them to bed, what we'll often do is put them into a room and make sure the lights are out and make sure nobody opens the door or anything. It has to be uninterrupted darkness that exceeds 12 hours in length, ideally about 13 or 14 hours of solid darkness each night. And then when you take them out in the daytime, you can bring them right out to the bright light and get them right back at it, doing their normal plant thing. So they still need the daylight in the daytime and they just need the, the extended nights. So the thing with, with the, uh, that nighttime period is it has to be uninterrupted. If you do turn the light on and then, oops, turn it back off again, if it exceeds about one minute, then it can actually stop the plant from, from moving forward in its transition to the colors. So, you know, it's just a really important thing. It's something we try to do uh, when we're trying to tell people what to do and they, they often get confused uh, with those descriptions, but key is, has to be nighttime when it's nighttime and daytime when it's daytime, and you can't have that interrupted nighttime uh, period. It's gotta be dark from the time you put them away till the time you pull them out. So um, the, the thing with poinsettias is, is that they often, uh, they often suffer. And I'm just, I'm gonna pull off this little decorative sleeve. And it's kind of nice that this actually has a hole in the bottom. So that means that somebody's actually paid attention. They went along and poked holes in the bottom of these things. Um, one of the problems we find is if, they, if the sleeve doesn't have a hole in the bottom, then the plant sits in that water in the sleeve and this will fill up with water. And the one thing that poinsettias hate is they hate sitting in water. The roots just rot right away. So um, really important to cut those holes and then you can still sit it in a dish for when you water it. So this particular one, great, great thing. If, if you ever get one with a sleeve, the first thing you do is check to make sure that it's got a hole in the bottom. So again, this is a four inch pot. This plant was planted as a cutting most likely back probably about, uh, I would say, maybe at the beginning of September. That would be typical to be to have a small plant like this ready to go uh, for Christmas. And so what they would have done is taken a cutting from the plant and they would have rooted it probably in the month of August or into maybe early September. And then once it grew roots, they put it into this small pot. And then as soon as the thing established a bit, then they pinched the top. And this is the point where they pinched it which is right here. I'm not sure if you can actually see that, but um, 
that's the spot where they pinched it. And then as soon as they pinched it, it branched out and it grew four stems, which produces four flowers. So it makes a nice bushy little plant. You'll sometimes get these grown with just a single stem with a single large bloom on top. So when you pinch them, you get multiple blooms, but sometimes they're a bit smaller. And if you want big blooms, you have to really, you know, grow less stems, but grow them for a longer time. So a lot of the, the bigger poinsettias that you see, they're actually grown from about uh, around the end of June, all the way through until they're sold in November. Uh, so anyway, it's a pretty cool plant. They're highly subject to root rot. Rhizoctonia, that's the particular disease that they get. So I always pop them out of the pot. You see, if I was really sharp, I would uh, pop them out of the pot when I before I buy it and just have a look to see that those roots are nice and white. I wouldn't consider these roots to be exceptionally white. I would say that they are showing some spots that are a little bit on the brown side. At least they're not black. What I'm looking at actually is I'm trying to look at the very tips, the little growing tips there that are coming out and making sure that they're white. And uh, yeah, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, I don't see these ones being uh, particularly white. There's a few white ones in there, but there's quite a few that are brown. So that means that they've probably rotted. So anyway, <laughs> that's the problem with poinsettias is they're prone to rotting. So the key to watering them is that you have to water them thoroughly, give them a good soaking, and then don't water them again until the soil is quite dry to the touch. Uh, you don't want to avoid them actually wilting, but you want to get right to that point where they're, they're thinking about wilting. So that's good timing. That means that you need to uh, plan on giving them a good soak again. Small pots, typical of all plants that are grown in pots, is that if you're growing in a small pot, then your watering rhythm is going to be much shorter, meaning that this one you might have to, I would be checking them at least, you know, every second day for sure. But smaller the pot, the more often you check it. If it's in a small pot, I would prefer to check it every day. And sometimes I'll just move, grab the plant and move it. And I have my thumb on the surface of the soil when I move the plant. So I'm getting that feeling of moisture. So I can kind of tell. Also, the best way is always by the weight of the plant. So if you have a plant that's, that feels, uh, you know, like it's, it's quite heavy, then that means obviously there's lots of water in it. But if you pick it up and it's like, whoa, this seems really light, then it's time for a good watering. But again, don't be afraid to actually pop them out of the pot. But you can see I grab it from the stem down low like this, and then I can pop it out. And then I can just pop it right back in. And uh, again, letting them dry between waterings is the key. So a four inch pot, I check it every day. And I probably, depending on how hot the house is or how bright the light is, the brighter the light, the, the better they do. But I'd be checking that every day and I might be watering it every second day, just as soon as it needs it, that's when I have to water it. So if I go to a, a six inch pot, then you know I'll be maybe checking, I'll try to check almost every day to see what the rhythm is. If I have a big plant in a, in a smaller pot, like relative to their size, I'm definitely gonna be checking that plant every day because a bigger plant will use more water. So I just have to do that. So if I go to something that's like a, uh, you know, eight inch or 10 inch or 12 inch pot, some of the bigger ones, I have to get used to the water rhythm of that plant. So that means I have to get my finger in there, push it down. The bigger the pot, the deeper down into the pot I have to check. So sometimes I'll go down you know, even a couple inches just to check and see what's going on. Um, so I think that's really one of the, the keys is just making sure you're not letting them dry out and get used to the weight of the plant. So if you give it a good watering, that's the time to feel it and go like, oh yeah, I just watered it. Yeah, I can get the idea that it feels pretty heavy. You know, the water is heavy. So then when you come back, hopefully, you know, you sort of remember the weight of it and then you go back and you go, whoa, this feels light, time to water it. So um, when they start to lose bottom leaves, that's a bad sign. They can do that just from drying out one time, meaning to the point to where they wilt. If you let them wilt between waterings, they'll start to lose their lower leaves. But interestingly enough, if they start to get root rot and they start to die back, they will also start to drop those, those leaves. And like I say, the leaves will actually start to die back a bit. You also get the crispiness on the tips of the leaves which is always, uh, you know, it's one of those tips that's telling you something's going wrong with the roots. So usually tips of leaves equals root problems. 
And it's often it's from drying out or it can also be a salt buildup in that uh, in that pot. So remember to check my other videos, uh, particularly on leaching house plants. That's particularly good. So uh, it tells you how to do it and what to do and what to look for. So there you go, uh, that's poinsettia. So now if I'm buying poinsettias, I go into the place, I go into the garden center and I'm looking around and I wanna see all the plants that they have, kind of getting an idea of what sizes that I wanna get. Sometimes it's nice to buy several smaller pots and put them into one larger pot or in a display or, or set them out along the base of a, of a mantle. Or There's all kinds of uses obviously at Christmas time, all kinds of things you can do. But the key to picking quality is just that general overall health, no leaves that are yellowing ideally. They can get a couple in shipping that might happen, but generally not any crispiness on the tips of the leaves. We look for that. But most importantly are these flowers that are in the center. So as we talked about in the, be in the beginning, is that these flowers in the center tell you what stage of bloom it's in. So um, the, the blooms here that have the, uh, that are absolutely closed right up and they're still green. So I'm going to show you that and I'll get a picture here that you'll be able to see as well. But this particular one here, some of these ones are not showing any color. You can see some of these have red. They're showing a bit of red in the center. So that's telling you that uh, that's starting to bloom itself. And you'll see the little, little anthers and stamens and things starting to come out of the, of the blossom itself. And that's telling you it's starting to bloom. So if you get them before those little things open, they're just like a little green blob and you start to see the flower forming, that means it's fresh. And if you see a couple of them just starting to open, that means that, you know, that's a good situation too. That means they're just coming on. This particular one, I'm just gonna do a quick count, but it's got three, six, nine. It's got nine of these little flowers in it. And I've got four, I've got five that are showing the colors. And I've got three, I've got about three or four that are showing, uh, that are not showing any color. So they're still green. So that's telling me this, this plant is about 50%, maybe, maybe about 40% finished. Like it's almost finished its bloom. It's still got a long ways to go. But if you go into a garden center and these things are all in full bloom and you, you're looking at them, that's how you pick the good ones. So you look through and you find the ones that have mostly green centers in the middle. And that means that that plant's just starting to get going. So that means it's got a nice long bloom ahead of it. Everything's great. If you pick them up and these are starting to fall off, they've all bloomed, they're dropping. Some of them you'll even find that they'll, they'll all be gone. They've already dropped. The bracts still stay colorful but it's coming to the end of its flowering period. So that tells you a little bit more about, you know, the health, the quality of that plant. You may see that reflected in the price. I'm not sure how many uh, garden centers out there know that, but if they know that, then what I would do is if it was, if I was a garden center owner, I would be separating them based on quality. And I'd say, Hey, all these ones, they have no flowers left. So I'm putting them on sale. Uh, just in case you want a bit of background color, you just need them for a party or something and nobody's going up and inspecting them. You know, for my own house, I'm going to pick ones that are like this, that are just starting to bloom or in the first 30% flowering would be ideal. And uh, actually there's one here that's just, it's just almost all green. They're just barely starting. Let me see if I can get that up there where you can see that. So, you know, there, there's not a lot of color on that one. Compared to this one, there's a lot more color on that one. So hopefully you can see that. We'll get some pictures up here as well. Alrighty, so uh, there you go. The, 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 the whole uh, poinsettia in a package. The one last thing that I'm gonna talk about today is about uh, the myth that they're poisonous. So with euphorbias, there's many euphorbias in the group that have sap, that white, uh, latex sap that's often uh, some people really react to it and some of them are quite uh, toxic almost um, the euphorbia mercenites is a is a donkey tail spurge that's quite common and it's considered a, 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 a bit of a noxious weed in a way and it's actually quite invasive because it spreads everywhere uh, you know, I have them growing in my yard and I keep pulling them out and they just keep growing back from seed everywhere uh, so um, that particular plant is quite toxic. And even uh, we've had people, some of our staff, 
come through with weed eaters, you know, and they'll weed whack down those plants and that, that white latex sap just sprays everywhere and it'll coat some people from head to toe. It's just the way it goes as part of a uh, sort of landscape maintenance in a way. But, you know, some people just don't react to it and other people literally go into, into shock. You know, we had one, one uh, young man who, who had a, you know, an actual allergic reaction. We had to take him into the clinic to have him looked at. Um, so, you know, that, but that was Euphorbia mercenites, not poinsettias. Poinsettias are known to be not poisonous. They don't have a poisonous uh, uh, factor to them. There, there may be people who have a slight, slightly worse uh, allergic reaction to the latex, but it's very mild. Um, I have absolutely no reaction to it at all. Like I can take it and, you know, put it on my skin. It doesn't bother me. And I know people have, you know, eaten them before. I'm not going to eat this one because I'm not really a big fan of the flavor, but um, the poinsettias are just not poisonous. So let's just wipe that right off the, the myth list, check it off, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, uh, thanks very much uh, for tuning in today. I really appreciate that, and I hope I've given you some quality information. Uh, remember to subscribe and to hit like if you found this uh, information valuable. And watch for new uh, videos coming out all the time. So we're trying to get uh, caught up on a few of our indoor planting videos as well as uh, just a few other good categories. We're doing our, our videos into playlists that'll make it a little bit easier for you to find information. So you can go to growercoach.com if you like, but you should go to YouTube and click and subscribe. So there you go. Thanks again for tuning in today. <music>